Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, 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 oh, let's go. Just open my side windows. Oh, fuck. I mean, oh dear me. Another car coming. So, how are you? Lots of cars on the road today. My neck looks a bit stiff, it's because it is, I slept on it funny. Oh, I've still got the tins in the back, but uh, I think they're empty, so they shouldn't make too much of a racket. I went flying yesterday. Flying is a fantastic hobby. Let me just uh, let me use the Mark One mirror retractor. I'll give you. I'll give you an example. I can give you. I can give you loads of examples. I was waiting to take off at Gamston and a Spitfire beat up the runway and did a barrel roll right over the top of my head. I did, um, I was waiting to land at Manston and the Red Arrows were waiting to take off from Manston and they formated up on the runway right literally underneath where I was waiting, orbiting on the downwind leg waiting to land and I saw the Red Arrows formate up and take off in formation from above. How many people can say that they've seen that? Yesterday I flew down to the Isle of Wight. Isle of Wight, Sandown Airfield, it's a lovely place. You don't need to ring them up and ask them in advance if you can land, blah, blah, blah. You just turn up, you taxi in. They've got uh, a grilled barbecue sort of thing going there all day. Restaurant and uh, it's a, a short taxi ride or, or reasonably long yomp to the beach but the beach is nice you can hire a deck chair uh, it's got a pier it's got sandy beaches it's got ice creams you know gets me quick hats etc and uh, Clacton's another place to a good, a good place to fly to easy walk at the pier but um, no the most amazing thing about yesterday was I flew over there in the morning and uh, it was clear in East Kent and as I got closer to the Isle of Wight it got more cloudy, landed in the Isle of Wight, uh, you know, bummed around, read a book, found a park bench, read a book for a couple of hours and um, took off and flew back and as I flew back it was obviously, it was, it was cloudy so I was flying along can fly along above the cloud quite legally so I was flying along above the cloud following my aerial Tom Tom and uh, I got to somewhere near Ashford and all of a sudden all the, the clouds just cleared you know just just went away and uh, instead of just flying like 200 feet above the clouds all of a sudden I'm flying at uh, 5,200 feet above Kent and could see could see the whole of Kent, you know, uh, right the way down to the White Cliffs and Margate and across the Channel and everything. And it was like uh, a curtain being drawn away from from your eyes, and just revealing the the majestic spectacle of uh, of Kent, of East Kent. Uh, it, it really was a fantastic. Uh, in fact, it was so fantastic. I did a 180 and uh, flew back over the cloud and then did another 180 and flew back uh, uh, so I could just sort of see it all revealed again. It was just uh, a fantastic day for flying. Good visibility, good fun. Flying is uh, its not a poor man's sport, but then neither is... Uh, Neither is, you know, collecting vintage cars, or even one vintage car. I mean, my my 
my plane was cost me five figures, but it cost me not not very far into five figures at all. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, and it, every year you have to spend a few thousand on it. But you know, when when you're flying along at five thousand, you don't want to skimp on maintenance, do you, on something like that? If it's, the compression's low on a cylinder, you want a new cylinder. If the uh, exhaust system is uh, 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 blowing and releasing carbon monoxide, you don't want to poison yourself, you want a new exhaust system. And seeing as the plane I fly, which is a rally, is uh, was uh, manufactured in the 70s, most of them are, are now on the ground being broken up for spares. So I was quite pleased to still have a working model of one. I should be like the last RAF Falcon soon. You know, one, I'll have one last flight and it'll be the last flight of the rally. Never mind about the Condor. So, um, so how are you anyway? All right, it's a lovely sunny day. I'm in a good mood as you can imagine. It's a Friday morning. I'm still pursuing my uh, objective of working fewer days, you know, sort of semi-retiring. I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Normally the hygienist works Tuesday, but she's having a break at the moment. Normally I would work Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning, and then if we are really busy, then I still tack a few patients on to Thursday morning. But uh, this week I've um, done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, had Thursday off. Now I've got Friday morning to do work and Friday afternoon off. I mean, the surgery is generally uh, very busy, as in, you know, booked up about as much as I want it to be, two weeks. Uh, two weeks, uh, uh, for three and a half days a week, you know, for two weeks. So we could, I could go mad and, and do what I would have done when I was in my thirties and forties and said, oh yeah, we'll work a Saturday morning or why don't we open up on the, sat on the Friday afternoon? just keep going, or uh, why, why are we having the Thursday off? Let's book the Thursdays up. But you know, I'm making a profit. I don't need to do that, and so I don't want to do that, you know? I'm 62 now. I'm not going to make old bones. <laughs> I'm possibly the last 10, 15 years of my life now, and so I've just gotta I'm just gonna tune along. I said to uh, my nurse, you know, we're getting really busy, do you think we ought to take on an associate? But that was me. That was young angry talking. That was me expansionist angry. <laughs> she said, what on earth are you talking about? She said, why would you want to take on? All the aggravation of having an associate, uh, you know, and uh, associate contracts and uh, dealing with uh, being the arbiter between the associate and any uh, patients that they upset and having to reconcile any clinical differences between the way you work and the way that the associate works and I haven't tried to explain to the. F to explain to the. <laughs> explain to the patients why the associate's been trying to get an NHS contract and you're not bothered about working on the NHS and why the associate's doing amalgam fillings and you're not doing amalgam fillings and why um, you're charging more than the associate or why your waiting time is less than the associate and. You just don't need all that, you know what I mean? You just don't know, you just don't need it. So, I've done one of these business uh, bounce back loans. So I refinanced. I think I owed about 15 grand, which I was paying off at 3,000 a month, which was, was insupportable really. So I took out 30, which is repayable over five years at 500 quid a month, which is very, very doable. 
Um, I'm putting any spare profit, any any spare cash in the surgery. I'm buying bitcoins with it, not just bitcoins, other coins as well. If you want to know the philosophy of it all, if you go to my website firstimpressions.dental forward slash money, then you'll see like a bit of the sort of the basics of the whole thing laid out for. And I did that because people are to death. People are always saying, you know, I've heard about this Bitcoin, but I don't really understand it. And so instead of having to spend 20 minutes explaining it all, I said, look, I go to firstimpressions.dental forward slash money. I said, it, it explains it all. You know, all about the fall of the Roman Empire. <laughs> or fall of the American Empire anyway. Now we're living through a, a unique, a very unique period of uh, wealth transfer from people holding the old money to people holding the new. So, but uh, if you have listened to a few of my podcasts, you'll know that uh, I've talked about Bitcoin in the past. In fact, I think we were one of the first magazines in the country to have a an article on uh, Bitcoin in the old uh, Dental Beauty magazine. We had uh, three or four pages on it. Probably when it was worth about $200 each. They're worth about $45,000 each now. And uh, my forecast at the beginning of the year was that they will be worth a hundred thousand dollars each by the end of the year, which is going to take a bit of a leap of faith because there have been a few funny, odd things that have gone on this year that have, um, which you could characterise as headwinds, but um, those headwinds have abated now, and so we should be back to growth as normal. Anyway. Yeah, so if you're in your 20s or even in your 30s and thinking of taking up flying as a career, what I would recommend is um, obviously you've got to get you've got to get trained. So uh, you know, I mean, you've got to look at it. That's a, an expense. It's going to be 10, 20, 30 thousand pounds to get your license. Uh, then you have to fly a certain number of hours a year, five hours a year, including one or two with a, a trainer. So then you've got to muster up the courage to find sort of 1,500 quid to do that every year. And then you've got to start thinking about getting yourself a plane. And then when you and and you've got to start thinking about getting yourself a plane. And then where's your nearest airfield? There'll be a waiting list for hangers. Uh, if it's a, a small plane, micro light, less than 600 kilograms, it's going to be made out of like tarpaulin and bits of string, wire, and <laughs> aluminium tubes and stuff. It's got to be kept out of the weather. If uh, you're lucky as I was to uh, find someone who was really trying to get rid of a proper plane which I mean aluminium construction capability uh, being left out, you know, in the same way as, as the 747 is left out, then um, that's really the pinnacle. As a dentist, you're in quite a good position to know um, aircraft owners and aircraft uh, air- airfield owners. And also, you know, there's a bit of swapping in terms of, you know, I keep my plane down your airfield and if you need the odd crown or two, then just let me know. But, um, I 
think of all the, I mean, I, I used to ride a motorbike when I was younger, and that fulfilled my requirement for uh, thrill, thrills, you know, risk taking, putting myself in danger to the extent that it got the old adrenaline pumping. Uh, but that's what it was. It was just, you were just like, it was like playing Russian roulette, you know. There's a reason why they call motorcycle riders kid organ donors. Um, whereas planes are, um, planes allow you to experience things that you'd never, that most people never experience. You know, see the countryside from above. See everything from above. You know, uh, go, <laughs> go. There's very few places you can't go. I mean, you can't go near Heathrow and, and Gatwick, but I mean, what the hell is there to see there? But if you want to fly over Checkers or Chevening or David Cameron's house or Jeremy Clarkson's house or farm or going to see Sandringham or uh, <laughs> there's uh, all sorts of stuff all, all weird things that look like pig pens in fields that turn out to be nuclear silos and stuff like that you get a, a very privileged access you get uh, notified of where, where the Queen's going to fly if the Queen decides to go from Sandringham to uh, um, to uh, Balmoral um, she does it by air and um, like uh, a week before she's going to fly they they send every A to the route so make sure that you don't get anywhere near her you know now, I'm not I mean this is all in the public domain I'm not giving anything away and to be honest if anyone's stupid enough to try and intercept the Queen's flight, they're going to get an exit set up their arse, and quite right too. <laughs> but, you know, you get also the Red Arrows, uh, reserve a lot of airspace, and then you see the, the drones um, in the channel, chasing the refugees, and uh, London Zoo rang me up recently and said, we're going to do a seal survey, and can we, you know, um, will you volunteer to fly us around uh, at low level over the channel at low tide so we can count the seals? And <clears throat> so I don't know. Uh, you, you probably won't. But about a, about three weeks ago, there was this article on uh, the news about seal survey and how the common seals going up and the harbour seals going down and whatever uh, and I was the pilot on that they didn't uh, give me any credit <laughs> uh, but you know it's nice to know that that was, that was another thing I've done you know another interesting thing that I've done I've flown uh, to 200 feet over the Goodwin Sands with someone hanging out the side with a telephoto lens um, taking pictures of the seals and Kay Burley actually said I, how do they how do they not count them twice you know this is not typical <laughs> this is about the level of Kay Burley but um, the way they do it is that they, they just like they take lots and lots and lots of photos of the seals and they take the GPS candidates, uh, coordinates and then when they get back to the zoo um, they um, they count the seals from the photos and so that's how they uh, that's how they don't count them twice anyway was going to talk a bit more about the surgery but mostly you know the surgery is running pretty well we've got 
NHS has collapsed, corporate sector's collapsed. I'm in long forecast by me. For 20 years, 30 years I've been saying it's not sustainable to do a course of treatment for three UDAs. Uh, and then of course along comes COVID and proves that by driving a coach and horses through the clinical and financial models of both the uh, NHS and the, the corporates who got model themselves on the NHS because they want the big NHS contracts um, and so um, that's left the, the highly nimble ready to pivot private independent sector uh, to um, to um, mop up the mess you know which basically consists of people ringing up saying they need a tooth out urgently or a filling done urgently and and can I tell them over the phone how much it's going to cost? Because, uh, because they, you know, money is a problem. All of a sudden, people who never ever thought they were going to ever have to have a fund for their teeth or join a dental plan for their teeth are now realising what dentists have known for a long time, which is the it costs an effing fortune to run a dental practice. And not only does it cost a fortune to run, thanks to thanks to people like John Watts' face at the CQC and uh, the BDA, you know, and all, all the uh, Office of uh, bloody, uh, Data Protection and uh, registering your x-rays with the local council and uh, all, all this, all that crap, all that crap that didn't exist when I qualified and has added nothing, zero, zilch, nada to the practice of dentistry, the safety of the patients or anything. Um, they're, um, we're now, we're now, we are now mopping up all the excess demand from the NHS. People ringing up and saying, you know, I need a filling, how much is it going to cost? Well, I mean, you say, well, you know, you can't, it's like ringing up a garage and saying, our car's broken down, how much is it going to cost to get it fixed? You can't tell over the phone, can you? And they get cross, you know, they get cross with you because they're like, <clears throat> they need to know. They can't just come along and give you an open-ended commitment. I mean, we don't. I explain to them that really what all they're committed to is the 45 quid for the checkup. Then we do the examination. We do the x-rays and the pain control are chucked in free of charge. You know, grass of me. And, um, and then they free to take my quote to another dentist and see if they can get it done for nothing. You know, or take it to an NHS dentist and see how much it costs them to get done on the NHS or do what they like with it. So 45 quid is all we ever ask. We never ask any more. The only time we ask more is uh, if they say, no, I want to come in, I want a tooth out. I want you to take tooth out for me. In which case then we invoice them our standard charge for an extraction, which I think is a hundred and something quid now. When I remember, I used to take I used to take teeth out for three pound fifty. Uh, that was when money was money had some purchasing power. Anyway. We're coming in slightly early today because we're going to be getting a wiggle on today. It's going to, I'm just, I should be saying to people when they come in, I'm sorry, I'd love to have a chit chat, but I've got 300 people coming in today. Hello. Sit down. Open your gob. Oh. That's patient number one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.